I've had the quad cortex for about two weeks now and I've played it about five times, so I'm basically an expert. Ha! No way. But I will say that my knowledge of how to get good sounds out of this unit has grown so much in that short period of time. I'm less impressed with myself and just more impressed with the user interface. I thought the presets I made last week sounded pretty good for not knowing anything. <laughs> But now, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. So much so that I think these sounds are starting to compete with, if not exceed, my tried and true pedal board and amp pedal setup. My pedal board features a Deep Six, a Bell Star, a JHS Moonshine, a Bender Fuzz, a Strymon Mobius, a Strymon Timeline, a Strymon Big Sky, all running into the ACS-1. It's a sweet setup. But what we're here to do today is see if the quad cortex can in fact eclipse it. First up, one of my favorite tones I've ever made with my pedal board and amp pedal setup is this huge ambient cold play tone. I'm talking a really big reverb, big delay, and a cool sounding drive. So what I've done is gone and recreated these sounds using just the quad cortex. No captures, no external anything, just what comes in this thing stock. I wouldn't say I'm trying to make it sound exactly the same, but I am trying to give it a similar character and a similar flavor. Who knows, maybe you'll even like it more. Check it out. It's my first time playing a guitar that's not my Telecaster into this thing. I don't know about you, but to my ear, those differences were pretty slight. Like if I'm being really nitpicky about it, sure, I guess the Strymon tones are a little more expansive and maybe the ACS one is just a touch more lifelike in the amp, but I think most of it is kind of a wash for me. I will admit, it did take a lot of tweaking with the reverbs on the Quad Cortex to get it anywhere near the ballpark of the Strymons. But now that I've done the leg work, I think it kind of does sound reminiscent of a cloud reverb or some sort of big Strymon reverb thing. Here's a hot tip that I learned from all my turning of the knobs. You're gonna wanna stack a couple long decay reverbs in front of your amp to get the most Strymon-esque sound. And when I say long decay, I mean my reverbs on the quad cortex both are about six or seven seconds each and the singular reverb I have on the Strymon is like 4.16 seconds. You do the math, it seems like the quad cortex should just be drowning in reverb and I'm not sure that even with this much reverb it sounds like as much reverb as the Strymon had. That's a lot of reverbs. <laughs> Generally, it seems like I have to add an additional three or four seconds to the decay time on the quad cortex to get it to sound like how my Strymon reverbs would sound. In the scheme of things, that doesn't really matter. All that matters is how it sounds in the end, and I thought these reverbs sounded really, really good. And maybe a few of you even preferred it. Clarity is nice. So let's take it one step farther, because I know a bunch of you are going to be like, oh, when you put that much reverb on anything, it's going to all sound the same. I'm not here to debate that, and I'm not saying 
saying whether that's true or false, but let's just strip it back. No effects, just the amp simulations versus each other. On the ACS-1, I use a Vox and a Fender. And so with the Quad Cortex, I am also using a Vox and a Fender. And let's do this thing blind so we leave our biases at the door. Here we go. You think you know which one is which? Here's the reveal. A is the Quad Cortex and B was the ACS-1. Once again, I'd say they both sound really good. And once again, I would say I probably prefer the amp pedal, but it's it's very slight. Something about the ACS-1 seems slightly less pristine in the high end and that makes it feel more lifelike to me. Yeah, that might sound ridiculous if you're new to the game, but I think a lot of us can agree that sometimes how perfect things like the Kemper, the Quad Cortex, Axe effects sound is kind of the giveaway that it's not real. It's a strange balance to find the amount of improvement over old technology while maintaining some of that quirky charm that gives it character. But I think with just a little bit of tweaking, I could easily get the Quad Cortex to sound just like my ACS-1. In addition to the Quad Cortex sounding a bit clearer, it also feels much wider. Like the stereo imaging, for whatever reason, is much bigger than it is on the ACS-1. And that's pretty cool. Also real quick, if you're enjoying this video, please leave a like on it right now. That would be so huge. Just like the stereo image on the Quad Cortex. Now let's do it again with a little more rock and roll fuzz tone. I'm gonna play the two clips and listen for which one you actually like more. Don't worry about whether it's the quad cortex or the pedal board. Like, sure, I guess you could do that, but don't let that influence your decision making. And just for fun, my wife and I are gonna join in. I'm gonna have her pick A and B. She won't know which is which, and then we'll just see. What do we all like better? I'm gonna blindfold myself since I'll I can just, read I it. I just closed my eyes, so. But you don't have to, you don't know what A and B is. You need <laughs> to see. What was the better one? Oh gosh, so that was hard. When I first listened to the first one, if that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> I was very like dead set, like this is X, Y, Z. And then it was so similar the second time around. I don't know which one I like better, to be honest. There's neg like negatives to both. The first one mm -hmm. that I listened to, I didn't really like this like, I don't know if it was like in your strum up or like did it, did it whatever that was that mm -hmm. you're doing. So I'm just bad at guitar is what you're no! saying? No! Is it fair to say that you thought the first one like had a little bit sharper attack? Maybe like that's, you could hear there the you pick go. Sound. See, that's exactly what you were saying. When I clicked onto the second one, the actual tone is so similar. But then when it came to the picking sound, I felt like it was less. And so then I was very confused of one, which I liked more, and then second, which was which. Which is good because we know for sure one of these is quote unquote fake. Well, they're both technically fake, well, right? Because they're both amp simulations. Okay, well, one is more expensive and one is... That's fair. <laughs> yes, one is much more expensive. And one is easier to carry around. For s someone who is an active listener of music who works and hears you play, I feel like I have more of a fine tune than Natalie or random <laughs> music. Goer. I mean, for all of us who know Natalie, which one's which? Which one's better? I about which one was just better? Right. Okay. Who cares which about better? which is which? That's, really? not, that's okay. not even the point. Okay. So, like, which one sounded better? Probably 
the second one I chose. Was the second one A? Yes. Yep, second one is the quad cortex. Oh, whoa. Yeah, it was 100%. Immediately within the first pick, I knew which one was which. I think part of it is because I've been playing with this thing long enough and yeah. I, you know, obviously recorded the audio and I noticed those little tactile things. Mm. In the blind test, I would have a thousand percent picked the pedal board. A thousand percent. That's like so I thought funny. it sounded significantly okay, well, you have better. A better. I don't know. I also picked the Fender, <clears throat> so I mean. Previously on YouTube. The Stratocaster sounded like complete trash. Like top to bottom, I hate this guitar. And which one was the best? C. C is the Strat, and I hate it on that. Like I took a total dump on it. I love already that. in this video. I loved that. Okay, so there's a lot to say about this, but I'm gonna try to limit it down to just three takeaways. First, the stock sounds in the Quad Cortex are actually really good, and it's so easy to get lost in the customizability of them. I've definitely done that. I've said I'm gonna sit down for like 10 minutes and just dial this in, and then an hour and a half has passed and I'm just subtly tweaking the treble and the bass by like 0.1 until it sounds just right. It's not there yet, but I am encouraged that every time I've sat down to tweak and deep dive, it does get closer and closer to what I'm used to having. Second, if I'm rating this thing based on just which is the most realistic sounding amp, I would throw it to the Walrus Audio ACS-1. There's something about it that is just like slightly more real. Maybe it's just the honky mid-range or that flattering roll off on some of those really high frequencies, but I gotta say a year later, I am still impressed with this thing. But again, the Quad Cortex has so many amps and cab combinations, plus the ability to capture other amps and cabs, it's hard to imagine that you couldn't very easily find something that would sound as good, if not better, than the Walrus Audio. I think this is also a fair point to mention. Like I talked about in my video about why guitarists are getting rid of their amps. I haven't really played on a tube amp in probably a year and a half to two years. So I've truly forgotten what that experience is like. Cause it's been so long, I wouldn't write off the fact that my ears are just so used to how the ACS-1 sounds that I have associated that with what a real tube amp is. Maybe the quad cortex is already closer to what the real thing sounds like. Third, the Quad Cortex is well on its way to doing exactly what I want it to. I didn't buy it to replace my pedal board entirely. I bought it because I wanted to use it live and I have a few tours coming up that I thought it would be nice to have on. I was getting pretty tired of lugging my pedal board around, checking it on a bunch of planes, having it get messed up and whatever the heck happens behind the scenes there, and then worrying about it at the shows about which cable's gonna go out and is it gonna be together when I open it at the hotel, you know, the whole thing. But let me tell you right now, I love my pedal board. Maybe I'm a little old school at heart, but I do think there's something to having individual pedals that do one or two things really well and having all those knobs to really get into all the parameters. I'm not super sold that the Quad Cortex and other digital modelers couldn't sound as good as the pedals. I just think there's something fun about pedals. It's nice to have physical units and knobs and all that. I digress. The Quad Cortex is dope and every time I use it, it sounds a little bit better. So I'm sure in another two, three weeks, this thing is gonna be sounding incredible. The Quad Cortex kind of reminds me of an air fryer where it gets you there with minimal hassle and the difference in flavor is pretty negligible. And I haven't even started profiling my pedals into this thing and that's a whole nother rabbit hole to go down. And I think maybe that is the extra 10, 20% that my ears are missing to get this thing to sound just as good. Be sure to comment down below if you are team pedal board and amp pedal or team quad cortex or maybe you're team something else, whatever, leave it down below. Subscribe to the channel and I will catch you next time.